Hello, my name is William Godwin. Have you ever said something to or about someone that you later regretted? It may have been something demeaning, rude, or even hateful. After uttering the remark, you likely thought, I shouldn't have said that. Most people would assume that this is a reasonable response to a linguistic misstep. You say something out of line, you apologize or not, and suffer the appropriate sociological interpersonal repercussions. However, there are those that would go a step further. They might say, not only should you not have said that, but you shouldn't have been allowed to say it in the first place. This idea is known as hate speech. On the face of it, it may not seem like such a terrible idea. There are things which one shouldn't say. Therefore, what is the problem with establishing legislation restricting such things from being said? There are, however, many problems with this, one of which is this. Who decides what ought to not to be said? The framers of the U.S. Constitution answered this question in the late 18th century. No one. They understood that granting such authority to any institution would have been antithetical to their design for a, na a nation founded on the ideas of individual liberty and limited government. They made the case that such authority would inevitably lead to tyranny. I will attempt to make a similar case. Hate speech as a concept is not a novel idea. In 1554, for example, the English Parliament passed the Rival of Heresy Acts. This law's purpose was written as follows. <clears throat> for the ensuing, quote, for the ensuing and avoiding of errors and heresies, which of late have risen, grown, and much increased within this realm, for that the ordinaries have wanted authority to proceed against those who were infected therewith, be it therefore ordained and enacted by authority of the present Parliament, that the statute made in the fifth year of the reign of King Richard II concerning the arresting and apprehension of erroneous and heretical preachers, and one of statutes made in the second year of the reign of King Henry IV concerning the repressing of heresies and punishment of heretics, and also one other statute made in the second year of the reign of King Henry V concerning the suppression of heresy and lollardy, and every article, branch, and sentence contained in the same th three several or acts, and every of them shall from the 20th day of January next coming be revived and be in full force, strength, and effect to all intense constructions and purposes forever. End quote. Now, as one can see, the notion that dissension constitutes punishment by the state is an age-old idea which lives on to this day. However, today's punishable heresies are not made against religious institutions, but against the ideological majority. USA Today published a survey in 2018 showing that 53% of Americans said that they have been subjected to hateful speech. Of course, we've all experienced hate speech, quote-unquote, of one form or another. Hypothetically, those who are petitioning for hate speech legislation would want to do something about that. However, they encounter uh, the aforementioned problem. Who defines hate? They have, <laughs> quite selflessly, volunteered to perform this task. In doing so, these ideologues have done nothing more than exacerbate the hatred. Take this all-too-typical scenario as an example. A panel of individuals are speaking to an audience about important political and cultural issues. The topic is a contentious one, immigration, for example. One speaker expresses the thought that U.S. immigration policy should be stricter and that border security should be increased. Instead of having a civil discussion with this individual, other panelists may be inclined to forego a rational discussion of it, about this uh, problem and label the speaker as racist, nativist, etc. There is a perfectly reasonable case to be made for a reduction in immigration. In 1990, Congress passed amendments to the Immigration and National Act, which authorized the hiring of a 1,000 more Border Patrol officers. According to the Center for Comparative Immigration Studies, crime rates in San Diego, uh, the city in which this center is founded, uh, the crime rates in that city dropped by 49.2% between the years of 1992 and 2000. This is a valid point. However, it is much easier for ideologues to silence opposition than to have an honest dialogue. This tactic has been employed by left-leaning activists in particular in discussions of other issues such as the wage gap, transgenderism, police brutality, etc. Its purpose is similar to that of heresy laws of medieval Europe, to silence dissent 
and demand conformity. This is in conflict with the notion on which Western civilization is predicated, the idea that the state does not possess the authority to limit the free exchange of ideas. My position regarding hate speech, one which I hope you'll consider, is well summarized by a line from Gilbert Chesterton's 1908 work, Orthodoxy. He writes, quote, There is a thought that stops all thought, and that is the only thought that ought to be stopped. Thank you.